Hey, hey, Sim fam. Hope you're all staying safe. The Figure Me Out Rubik's Cube Challenge is happening right now. So this is a tutorial to help you figure it out. Remember, you have until April 7th to submit your videos online. But if you're watching this video after the submission date has passed, then you can still have fun cubing, and I'd still love to see your videos online of you rocking the Rubik. So I'll be showing you the beginner method to get you started, and there are eight steps to follow. So here we go with my special Soup Wave Colors Cube, and now let's rock the Rubik's. So once you've jumbled up your cube, you want to find the yellow centerpiece and make sure that it's facing up. The first step is called the daisy. I want to place four squares or petals around the yellow center. So I want to locate any white square that sits in the middle of a column or a row. And I see three here. So I'm going to take these first two and swivel them into place. And now I need to find two more. So I look and find my white center pieces. Okay, so I see one there and I see one there. So sometimes you have to do some extra maneuvering to get these where you need them to be. Um, so I'm gonna swivel this around this way and do that and do that. And now I've got this in the center where it needs to be and I can swivel that up. And likewise with that white square. So now I have my daisy. The second step is the white cross. I wanna take each white petal and I wanna flip them to the bottom. Before I do that, I want to take a look at the adjacent side of each petal and see what color it is. So this is pink here. So I'm going to rotate this top row until I can match it up with its pink center. And then after I've done that, I can rotate this side twice so that the petal is now on the bottom. This is a super easy step and I'm going to repeat it for the next petals. So now I flip my cube over and I have my white cross. The next step is placing the white corners. So I'm going to look for any remaining white squares on the sides of my cube. And I see a couple here, but ideally I want to work with the white squares that are on the bottom row in the corner. So I'm going to start with this one first. I'm going to take a look at the other colors that surround the white side. I've got blue and I've got red. So I'm going to swivel this bottom row until I find the matching blue piece here. I wanna have a matching diagonal line here. I notice the other color is red and I see that it matches up here with this red center piece. So I know now that I want to put this white square in this corner. So to do that, I wanna move away from my matching diagonal. So I'm gonna move the bottom once over this way. And then that column where the white square used to be, I'm gonna move that down, move the bottom row back, and move the column back up. And now my white square is where I need it to be. Okay, I'm gonna do it with the next white square that I see on the bottom row in the corner. I'm gonna match the pink up with the pink center so I have a diagonal line here. And I'm gonna confirm blue, blue, so I know this white square needs to go right here. And I'm gonna repeat that sequence. So now I have a scenario where I don't have any more white squares on the bottom row. So I'm going to have to do a little extra maneuvering to get this piece where I need it to be. So what I like to do is I'll move the column down and then move the bottom left or right and then swivel this back into place. And now I've got the white square where I need it to be. And bonus, it's already matched up diagonally with the pink centerpiece. So now I know this square needs to go here. So repeat the sequence again. So my last white square is on the very bottom. So I need to do some maneuvering to get it where I need it to be. Okay, and now I have that white square on the bottom. So rotate this so that I've got my matching diagonal and this white square needs to go here. So now I've placed my white corners and the next step is the second layer. I wanna create two rows of the same color on each side. To do this, I wanna look at the bottom row center pieces. And for now, I wanna avoid any piece that has a yellow side to it. So I don't wanna work with that one, um, but this one I can work with because it is pink and blue. So sometimes this will be say over here and I wanna swivel the bottom over so that it matches up with the pink center piece. 
Um, plus I've got this really awesome T shape here. T for Terminator 2, one of my favorite movies, yay. Okay, now I wanna look at the other color on the bottom, which is blue and find the blue side. So pink, pink, blue, blue. I know this piece needs to go in this corner here. To do that, I'm gonna move the bottom row away from where I want this piece to go. So that way, then move the column down, move the bottom row back over and move the column up. Now I've temporarily displaced a white corner. So I'm gonna repeat the same sequence from step three in order to get this over here. Spin my cube around and see if I can find uh, another piece. I'm gonna work with this piece next, red and blue. Match it up with the red. Find the blue side. This needs to go here. So move away from where I want it to go, move the column down, swivel this back over, move the column up, and put my white square back in place. Take a look around for any other squares I can use. This one. And great, I have another square here I can use. So line it up with the green. Pink, pink, I wanna place that here. And I've completed my second layer. I got really lucky. I didn't have to end up using any of the pieces with the yellow side to it. Sometimes you have to. Say for example, this piece here was inverted. Um, so if that were the case, I would need to free this guy up by repeating the same sequence and trying to get this in its place so that I can free it up to put it in the right way. So once you've completed the second layer, you can flip over your cube for the yellow cross step. Now there's four parts to this step. The first part being just having a, a yellow center on the top. The second part is having a yellow R shape. So a yellow square here, yellow square here, and a yellow square here. The third part is having a yellow horizontal line. And the final part is having the yellow cross. So right now I'm already in the second part of this step. So the next sequence is we take the face of the Rubik's cube and we spin it clockwise once. Take the right column, move it up. Take the top row and go clockwise once. Take the right column, spin it down. Move the top row counterclockwise. And we see I've got a white column here. I'm gonna move that down. And now I have my yellow horizontal line. I'm gonna repeat that exact same sequence again to get my yellow cross. Move the face clockwise. And I have my yellow column, move that to the bottom. And now I have my yellow cross. The next step is aligning the T's. So now you should have at least two sides that have matching T's. So in order to find those two matching sides, sometimes you need to swivel the top. So I have two matching sides here, a red side and a blue side. Sometimes you'll have a scenario where you have a matching side on the back and a matching side on the front. That's kind of the first part of this step, but I'm already in the second stage of this step. The next stage is what I have here, where I have a matching side on the back and a matching side on the left-hand side. So with this on the left-hand side, I'm gonna do the following sequence. Move the right column up once, move the top layer clockwise twice, move the side column down, move the top layer counterclockwise once, move the column up once, move the top row counterclockwise one more time, and move the white column down. Then I can swivel this around and I have four matching tees. The next step is placing the corners where you wanna make sure the colors of your corner pieces match the two sides that it falls between. So here I have pink and pink, but I have green where there's a blue side, so that's not matching. I have pink and red and blue and blue, so that's not completely matching. This one is perfectly placed, uh, and this one is definitely not matching. So I wanna have the only matching side on the right-hand side, and I'll complete the following sequence. Bring up the left column, move the top row clockwise, bring up the right column, move the top row back over, bring the left column down, bring the top row back over and bring that white column down and swivel the top to make sure that my T's are aligned again. 
And now let me check my corner pieces. I have blue, blue, and pink, pink. And I have blue, blue, and red, red. So that's perfect. So now I'm ready for the last and final step. Now you may have to repeat the sequence I'm about to show you a couple of times, but I know that I'm almost at the finish line because I see that these two yellow pieces are facing to the right side. Once you've got that, you're in the home stretch. So here's the last and final sequence. The first half of it is the exact same sequence of step six. Bring up the right column, rotate the top clockwise twice, bring the right column down, bring the top counterclockwise once, bring the column up, rotate the top counterclockwise one more time, and bring that column down. And now I'm going to repeat a very similar sequence on the left hand side. I'm going to bring the left column up, rotate the top clockwise twice, bring the column down, rotate one more time, bring the column up, rotate once more, and bring the column down. And now I have a solved Rubik's Cube. And as a bonus step, one thing I like to do after I solve my Rubik's Cube is I like to do this. And I have another pretty little design. Thank you for watching this tutorial on how to solve a Rubik's Cube. I can't wait to see your submissions for the Figure Me Out Rubik's Cube Challenge to win a free download code for the album Mega Wave coming out on April 24th, 2020. We've already had some pretty rad submissions, so I can't wait to see more. Pre-order the album with the link in the description, and if you want to learn how to solve a cube in more detail, I've included a link in the description for that as well. Stay safe, stay retro, and keep rocking the roots.